Hello there everyone, my name is Rand, today we're here to play some more Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate. Thank you all for joining me for today's episode. This is episode number 10, I believe. Um, last episode, we did well, more than I normally would have, considering that um, I ended up having to do some crap that I normally wouldn't have wanted to do. And by that I mean that I tried to record an entire video, this game auto-saves, so after it did all that saving and the video got corrupted to hell and back, we could not show any of that footage. Um, I did show the intro footage to one of the monsters I fought in that video that you guys still didn't see. But having said that, um, you will notice, well, eagle-eyed viewers would have noticed, that my weapon is now purple. It has been upgraded to a high rank weapon. Yes, I did say high rank. I am now actually HR4. When we started off this game, we were HR Jack, did Lee McSquat. Ended up going to HR1 just by talking to the entry level dude at the actual port itself. And I don't think you guys have seen me do a single port quest. Those are harder than the village quests. I don't care what anybody says. They are not scaled to... Um, they are not scaled for multiple players and single player, even if the game was meant to. Like I said, I've tested... Maybe my game is just bugged. I don't care. I'll stand by what I said. I have done extensive testing on whether or not the quests were actually scaled. They're not. They take almost the exact same amount of time when I'm doing them on my own and when I'm doing them with other people. And for those of you who have played Monster Hunters or any game series like Monster Hunter, one through now currently World, technically five, um, the monsters always scale up so far as life is concerned. They don't do extra damage, they don't, um, usually they don't have like more defenses or anything where you need increased weapon sharpness, but my point is those monsters took me within a minute or two the same exact amount of time and when they scale up in life like i said earlier it's somewhat awkwardly with that uncomfortably long silence they have double sometimes triple the life anyone can do the math and figure out it would take more than a minute or two to close that gap so again maybe i'm doing something wrong i don't know if there's something you have to do for it but they do not scale so i went online and i was killing those creatures leveled up my stuff you'll also notice that um, i have the rogi hat s Rogi Male, Van Braces, Falds, and Greaves S. These are the high rank Rogi equivalent. My defense was 110 at the end of the last episode you guys saw. It is now 275. Um, fire resistance, Dragon resistance are now 10 apiece. This is going to be my main armor set for a little bit until probably I get to G rank, to be honest with you. And, I mean, I have speed eating plus one. If I get an eating talisman, I'll slap that on and get speed eating plus two. That'll help me quite a bit. Other than that, the skills are exactly the same. It has one extra slot. As opposed to the five, it now has six. And there's really there's really no reason for me not to have done that, considering the fact that I told you guys in the beginning it's gonna be more of a casual playthrough. I'm not gonna show everything. And the high rank and low rank in the village, I, those those have story modes to it. Technically. There's there's a little bit of a story, even though sometimes I kind of just skip past that too. But the port has no story at all. You can kind of finagle it around and be like, oh well, you know, when you hit G rank. Since that's village exclusive in this game. You know, they talk about a monster that's coming to blow everybody up. It, no, don't even. That that don't count. That doesn't count as story because it doesn't affect the game itself. No one in the actual port besides the, the captain or the guild master even mentions the damn thing. It's not a threat. It's just, a, oh, here's your end game boss for G rank. You want to fight it? Um, this is not the only high rank weapon I have. You'll notice I've got another rare five weapon. Usually, the the ranks of the weapons are what determine their rarity. Their um, the, yeah, the rarity is what determines the rarity. No joke. The rarity of the weapons determine their strength. Um, as far as rank goes, one through three is low rank. Uh, there is kind of a gray area for rare four weapons. Um, those can sometimes be low rank. Most likely, they're four. So we'll just say that's again a gray area. Five and six are definitely high rank. S um, seven and eight and nine. And 10 are all G rank. So I believe in this game you have up to rare 10. Um, but for now, I have two rare 5 weapons, two high rank weapons um, with the Jin Plus and the Amethyst Claw. So I got a water and a fire weapon. They both have blue sharpness, which is incredible for this point in the game. I'm still going to be fighting some low rank monsters. But I do have the necessary requirements, I believe, anyway, to do our last chance or one chance. Um, let's do this as well. So now our dairy has been leveled up. I think we have one star in that now. I need to start doing some canteen quests, to be honest with you. Level all that crap up. 
Um, Lamp Mask I can do, but I never use it, so whatever. One chance, let's do it. We should be able to build a base camp that'll stand up to any natural disaster with this stuff. Last thing I want is for some monster to tear this place down again. You do your job, Hunter, and I'll do mine. I haven't felt this fired up about working forever. I just pray the Sea Dragon start, stays far away while we're working. Right then. We'll head out as soon as everything's ready. So now that I use the materials for that, they'll start working on that. And I can talk to the sweetheart here. Hey, you can't fool me. I know you've decided to take tackle the sea. I call it Cedius. Sea of Days. I've heard people um, pronounce it, but me, it's Cedius. I don't care. Uh, you do know that the guild can revoke your license if you go against orders. You won't be able to go on hunting grounds or use base camps to get info on monster locations or fix weapons. Uh, I honestly don't believe any of that. You know, maybe not the hunting grounds and uh, base camps thing, but I mean, where exactly do we have to go? We could just be like protectors of this village, and the weapons that we currently have are more than sufficient to defend it, but that's got nothing to do with nothing. And the money, there goes your income. Heck, there goes your transportation, too. And yet you still want to do it? Oh, am I kidding? Of course you do! You need to know, though, the guild's decision is based on solid intel. They're not just overreaching or overreacting, I guess. I don't know. They, I, for some reason, always have a difficult time reading the words in this game. No other game does that to me. And that's an honest statement. I can play any other game that I'm reading, and it's, it's fine. But in this game, I always mispronounce the words or say the words wrong or something. I don't know why the hell it happens. They've seen the dragon and they know what it can do. And just like they said, the Cedius is way too much for one hunter to take on in a fair fight. Yet, of course, it's exactly what we're going to do and exactly what we're going to achieve. If you want to drive it off, you'll need the help of the entire village. I mean, I guess they don't go on the quest with you. So the first step is to gather the chief of the village, chief and the villagers. See, there I go. And get everybody on the same page. If they're all like, no way, let's blow this popsicle stand, then you have to promise to go along with it. I actually don't know what happens if you say no here, so let's say no. I'll stop being a stupid head and just say I promise so we can move on. For now, you should keep hunting as usual. We need the guild to fall. I don't, again, I don't, I don't understand it. I really don't know. It's not because I'm recording, because I can read words while I'm recording for other videos and it doesn't do nothing for me. Um, I can play other games with relatively small text. It's just this game. It's the weirdest damn thing, but it's just this game. Where is this fool? There it is. I don't know why I thought it was called something else. Anyway, the uh, Urigan is the next monster on our chopping block, and he shouldn't take that long. Considering that I have a high rank weapon. This is actually the strongest high rank water weapon in the game. On, well, the strongest water weapon in the game until you have access to G rank. So, um, I didn't even check my materials. I'm, I'm good. Because this is low rank. By the way, once you get to high rank, they stop giving you crap at the boxes. And you can appear wherever the hell the game feels like spawning you at. So, I'm already not really used to starting a base camp. And starting with items in the box. Now, if you have supplier, they will give you... Um, items at the start of the quest, but nine times out of ten, I won't have that. They gave you a uh, pickaxe there so you can actually mine off this Chumposaurus Rex when you knock him over, or he falls over on his own when he gets tired. He'll just kind of, and then at that point, you can walk up behind him, use the axe, and mine stuff off his back. Not really sure where he gets it from. I know he eats the stuff, but again, if he's eating the rocks, and you'll see him. You guys saw him momentarily in a previous video when I was delivering them Powder Stones, player. But you didn't really get a good look at him, and he's so big. I don't see how he's getting rocks all stuck all over his back specifically. I understand he digs through the ground and he rolls around like a jack wagon, but why just his back? Why not his arms? Why not his leg? Why not his gut? Why not his jaw? You guys will see. I talk too much about random crap that has nothing to do with anything, but if, then again, if I didn't do that crap, I wouldn't be me. So, you know, for better or for worse, baby, there he is. There he is. I love this thing. I don't care what anybody says. A lot of people don't like Urgan for some reason. A lot of people don't like Brute Wyverns in general. And although, for whatever reason, I don't like how they did my man Devil Joe in uh, World, I don't know why I just don't enjoy him nearly as much. Fighting him, his theme music, it's just not, 
not what I grew accustomed to. Maybe I'm maybe I'm a sucker for nostalgia. Maybe I am, but uh, that's never been something I've been accused of before. I've been accused of a lot of things, some good, some bad. But, um, yeah. Oh, blue sharpness isn't enough for his job. You have white sharpness. My fault. Uh, still. You know what? That's kind of an interesting topic, I guess. Fill the void while I'm fighting this uh, stupid whatever he is. Huh! Um, nostalgia and all that. Do you got... Oh, no. He can put you to sleep, by the way, with that uh, blue gas. That he uh, excretes from his underside, his back, his sides, basically every damn thing. That's even remotely his stomach. Um, yeah, no. Do you guys ever have that kind of situation where you like something and it's just because you had experiences with it as a child? If you ever sit down and look at it critically, you know full well that it would suck by today's standards or even by your current standards. But because you enjoyed it as a kid, you enjoy it now. Or even worse so, in my opinion... Oh, this is an attack he only does here, by the way. Easy enough to avoid. Just stand off to the side and watch him roll. I mean, you can also stand in the center. And there are areas where he won't hit you because he does kind of like a figure eight. Uh, don't know if I know where those areas are, but I guess I'm about to find out since I'm not moving from this spot. Um, well, he missed. Don't even know where he's at. Oh, there he goes. No, nah, but he missed. Did he hit me? Nope, so I guess that's one of the safe areas. There's there's like two or three areas you can stand in while he's doing that and be completely unaffected by his attack. Aside from the actual sides. Because like I said, he will kind of just figure eight so he doesn't like radically just change his tactics. Anyway, even worse, like have you ever gotten to a point where you recognize that it's nostalgia? And you don't even consider whether or not um, it would suck without those nostalgia glasses. You just like it because you like it. Even if... Like, the current you saw something like that come out today and you wouldn't like it? I don't know. See, I could go right up to his back and mine him in this situation. Anytime he's on his side, but who cares? So yeah, um, the farming of these monsters has gotten significantly easier and faster since I started doing the high rank quest online. By the way, as far as speed and time goes, that's always a big, big concern in this game. You guys have seen nine videos currently, uh, once this is done, if you actually watch the whole thing, ten videos worth of content from me on this series. I have spent almost 30 hours playing this game. Um, you guys don't even typically, well, lately haven't even been getting 30 minute videos off of these. But say for the sake of argument that they're all about 30 minutes, that's only what? Oh, leave me alone! That's not even five hours of gameplay you guys have seen, but I've sunk over 30 hours of gameplay into this game so far with just this one character. Mind you, this is just one game out of the six or seven that I've played, and this is one character out of the probably even more numbers of characters that I've made for this game alone. And it's kind of weird when I was talking about nostalgia earlier with my boy Devil Joe that you guys haven't seen yet. Um, now, I've seen him. He starts showing up on high rank quests. And I saw him one time earlier today when I was fighting a Rath. I was at the recording this video in a. Um, when I was fighting a Rathalos. High rank, he decided to show up, make his presence known. He followed us everywhere. Also, it's um, 3 a.m. when I'm recording this video. I just finished that Rathalos quest that I was talking about to upgrade my fire sword. But um, I've been using this water sword for probably a day or so. Things like Korpeko, um, things like Great Rogi, hell, even the Great Jaggy, which doesn't have an elemental weakness to water at all. But things that are at least even slightly weak to water, even things that are immune to water, this is actually a faster weapon to kill him on. Just because the actual physical attack of this weapon at 252 um, is the strongest weapon that I've got for Sword and Shield. And trust me when I tell you, even though I know that the Great Sword has 600 and something attack, a 250 something sword and shield if used correctly quote unquote especially with the blue sharpness will do much more significant damage to a creature than a seven uh well it's like 700 and something if i eat for strength increase 700 and something attack point great sword with green sharpness but anyway this guy's also in monster hunter world and i still enjoy fighting him I just, I, I don't know what it is about Devil Jar, I just don't like him as much in World. Can you come over here for a second while I'm trying to talk to you? 
I just want to examine certain parts of you. Yeah, this sword is actually... Yeah, he's dying already. This sword is actually still a Royal Ludroth sword, technically, but it is a, another version of him. Since it's a purple sword, I'm guessing you guys can probably tell what color he is. Uh, the monster in question, but I will not spoil it just in case you cannot figure it out. Don't want to figure it out until you see it or whatever. Again, whoever's actually watching this, uh, not really a whole lot of reason to redo this game particularly. Me personally, I've actually been enjoying this game more so than Monster Hunter World. Um, Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate, Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate have always been really solid games in my opinion. World, I just don't like as much. I, I don't know, um, there's actually quite a few different reasons, I guess, that I have for it. Um, nothing, like, extremely bad. The game is not a bad game by any merit. But, um, there's not as much variety in the creatures, in my opinion. Um, there's not as much variety in the hunting areas, in my opinion. We don't even have, like, a frosty or iced out area. And, of course, I know that they're doing DLC pretty much all the time. We're getting stuff every month. So, of course, they could add another icy area. Uh, maybe use the effect, or maybe use the excuse of, by the way, he's dead. Maybe use the excuse of, oh, well, it's too cold of an area, and the whole area is like that, so we don't usually like to send hunters over there. But yeah, no, there's an area on the other side of the island, on um, the other side of the continent, rather, because it is a continent, um, the New World. Based off my understanding, anyway, there's another side of us over way over there. It's like super mega frigid, like super mega frigid, and we don't usually have the capability to hunt over there or maybe we just ran out of our supply of hot drinks pretty much indefinitely until whatever reason the Argosy captain is now showing up with hot drinks now he was able to secure a trade route or whatever um maybe he had a falling out with one of his trade buddies who refused to give him hot drinks you know all, now you only get cold drinks you bastard which was actually completely inconsequential because the elder recess didn't exist until zora magdros went down there whatever there are many ways they could just spin it so oh by the way here's a cold area you guys didn't have access to before but like all the ice monsters are gone the only one that they have is like yana and like yana's kind of crap as far as it's not a bad monster but i would not have selected like yana armor stones are very useful I would not have ever selected Legiana to be the solo representative of Ice. Because in that game, there are no monsters currently, as of recording this video, that use Ice besides Legiana. And Legiana is not a bad monster. It's not a bad Apex monster. It rules the Coral Highlands, and it definitely has the capabilities to do it. It's got the, it's got the size, it's got power, it's got the swiftness. That's all well and good. But to be a main rep of ice it doesn't even look like an icy creature um in this game there's a creature you guys saw me fight before called Barioth. if Barioth was the only ice monster in the game it would make sense um not in the coral highlands so he'd need an icy area to live in but i mean the way he moves his strength his speed um the way he utilizes the ice to his advantage the way that he's actually adapted to survive on the ice and take down other creatures that are not as adept it makes more sense but it's just something that I think is kind of weird. Plus, there's this adage that uh, lightning basically wins you the game. You know, they have this thing where they say, you know, hey, if you want to win the game, if you want to win Monster Hunter World, just bring lightning. And I don't understand that at all. There's several monsters in that game that aren't weak to lightning. Um, aside from, you know, you've got people say because the Rathalos and Rathian, um, they're both weak to lightning. And then you've got the Kusheladar is kind of weak to lightning. Um, then you've got Nergigante is weak to lightning. So, I mean, there's there's a bunch of Odogarns weak to lightning. So there's there's a bunch of monsters in that game that are weak to lightning, true enough. But I don't understand where the idea of bring lightning and you win comes from. Because I know Devil Joe has been added. And now he's, he's also weak to lightning. He always has been. Then uh, Basil Geese is also weak to lightning, and those are two of the hardest fighting monsters, hardest hitting monsters in the game. Again, in addition to the Wraths, um, the Pink Rathian is weak to lightning. I do not believe the Zorathalos is weak to lightning. I believe he's weak to dragon and ice. I might be wrong, but um, even if he is, that's what six of the hardest hitting monsters in the game. Seven, because uh, Nergigante, all four of the different versions of Wraths. That's five. Then. Uh, Baz and Devil Joe, and then I think Kushala's kind of weak to lightning as well, mainly dragon, but um, 
Very few people ever use lightning against him. It's it's one of those situations where a lot of monsters have a main weakness and a secondary weakness. Uh, even though Kushala is only weak to two different elements, I always considered lightning to be like a third weakness because it's really far back. He only takes slightly more damage from lightning than he does to elements that he's neutral against. But let's talk to the village chief real quick and then I'll get back to my little discussion here. What's that you say none of the villagers want to evacuate? Trust me, kid, I know. Well, there's really no way for us to know because we haven't talked to anybody. The girl at the market chewed me out for even suggesting it. She insisted it's her job to get you tools and medicine. And the girl at the armory refused to go anywhere until she figured out the ultimate weapon for you to hunt with. I have not even talked to her, I don't think so, actually. Um, even that feline cook laid down the claw and said, Nobody hunts on an empty stomach. Can you believe it? Well, to at least get the kids out, Junior had them all packed up and on the boats, but guess who just snuck back in? Every last one of them said they know you'll come through for us. There ain't a shred of doubt in, the, in their minds. To be told, I was thinking of asking you to give up the hunt for your sake after everyone had left, but now? Well, I don't doubt you either, kid. I believe in you. And again, I switched the words around. We're ready. You can launch your attack on the CDS at any time, and I know you'll drive it off for us. I've never met a hunter quite like you, except myself, but I'm over the hill. You've got strength, skill, smarts, and them abs, though. And you've got us. I promise you'll come home in one piece, kid. One piece? That's about pirates! Morgan Village is facing a disaster unlike it any it's ever seen, but look at this. Not one person has run away. Of course, I have my responsibilities as the official guild liaison, so I sent out my report on the situation. Progress report. Village evacuated without incident. Until the liaison remain until final super violence is complete. Hee hee hee! Now they can't force us back to headquarters. Not if we're looking after the villagers. Operation Time Waster is proceeding as planned. Hmm? I'm gonna get canned for doing all this? Don't you worry your little head about that, fearless hunter. Seriously, I consider this village and everyone here my greatest treasures. So the man can put that in his pipe and smoke it. Sure, there's a recession and jobs are incredibly hard to come by, but I'll burn that bridge when I come to it. Anyway, while you were out, we all got together and came to a decision. Since you're planning to save the day and all, we feel that it's the least we can do. Let's throw it out with you, even though we won't be going with you. We all pitched in and got the base camp in full working order for you. Talk to Chief Sun for the nitty gritty. He's calling the shots behind the scenes. Oh, and don't forget about your little buddy. Was I supposed to talk to her before we did that? I mean, I don't see how, considering I did the quest. But you only get that quest after you have the base cap. Because she just said to talk to Junior, and you don't have to talk to Junior. The quest is already here. Urgent quest. Yeah, save Mogul Village. Drive off the Cedius. That's not going to happen in this episode. Because that's a long-ass quest. Even with a high rank... I don't have a high rank weapon that I'm going to use against him. I'm going to get a lance first. But um, even with a high rank weapon to use against the head Chuparama, it's still a two-phase quest. Where you have to drive him off and then fight him. And then after you break his horns, he leaves. And there's a really long cutscene, so no, not happening in this episode. But anyway, having said that, the whole, you know, lightning wins you the game, I don't know what he's talking about. I should have I should have paid more attention to him. It doesn't make much sense to me, because those hard-hitting monsters are weak to lightning. Um, let's see, what are the hardest-hitting monsters, the toughest ones? Uh, Legiana, Odogaron, Wrath, 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 Devil Joe, uh, Basil Geese, and uh, Kushala. Okay, so that's a hefty amount. That's assuming I didn't miss something. That's nine different monsters, I think. Maybe my math is trash. Um, but that's nine different monsters that you have to fight that are weak to lightning. Hey, there you are. We finished with all of our preparations. The CDS is in an underwater lair. We built up a new base camp above its head. If you have little Chocho or the other runt on the mast, they should be able to breathe all the way to the bottom. Um, you have the underwater capabilities of the ancient mass. They start blowing out fresh air bubbles for you, so you never have to worry about drowning. Is basically what he's talking about. The inner reaches of the cave are full of ancient weapons. This is good. I doubt even the world's greatest hunter could beat that. Really? I mean, you can fight him all the time. Without, uh, using the... You can just go in there with your weapon and beat his face in. Uh, yeah. Anyway, whenever it's the right moment, then use those ancient weapons strategically, of course. You're the hunter. You figure it out, bro. The fate of our village is in your hands. Again, we'll be pulling for you. Again. <sighs> what the hell? Oh, cool, honey. I can do that. To Giganox parts. 
So, does that mean we get another cutscene for fixing up the honey box all the way? Yes, we does. It looks exactly the same as it used to, but it's all good. So, hard-hitting monsters in Monster Hunter World that are not affected by lightning, or at least not weak to it. You have, let's see, Diablos and Black Diablos. The end game boss, the Xenojiva, is not weak to lightning. He's not technically weak to anything. Um, according to the game, anyway, he is of neutral damage to all elements, even though his armor would have you believe otherwise. So, Diablos and Black Diablos, Xenojiva, Kirin is of course immune to lightning, if anything it'd probably heal the damn thing. Then you also have uh, Valhazak, the Elder Dragon, you also have Teostra, Teostra, Teostre, whatever, another Elder Dragon. So, I mean, this idea to me about bring lightning, I actually should have sent you out, bring lightning and you've won the game is just a little weird to me. Um, those are arguably five of the strongest monsters in the game, and none of them are weak to lightning. Some of them are resistant to it, and one of them is completely immune to it. So, of course, this got nothing to do with my original point of why Devil Joe isn't as good in that game. And I don't really have, uh, did I really get four skills off of that damn Ur again? I wasn't even paying attention to the cards when I got them. Of course, it's got really nothing to do with um, Devil Joe, but uh, I just kind of started ranting off. But it's just kind of weird to me that they could change like one or two things about him, and all of a sudden I don't like him as much. Lore-wise, he's still one of my favorite monsters. He's still one of the coolest monsters in the game. It's the idea of a creature that literally cannot stop eating, cannot stop killing, or he himself will die. Hell, he's so pissed off when you put him in a trap, he still beats on you from in the trap, whereas every other creature's priority is to get out of the trap devil joe just ain't having it but regardless i'm just wasting time at this point this is 27 minutes of uh the finest quality bullcrap for now i'm ending this episode because there's really nothing else i can do that i can finish in three minutes or less and i probably could have cut up that urgan hunt but i didn't and i'm not going to so regardless we're out of here next time we are going to go after cedius here and that will actually unlock high rank for us in the village which is pretty nice and ironically the first monster that we have to fight is going to be the monster whose weapon i am holding who you guys have not seen yet so thank you all for watching as always my name is ray go ahead and follow me on twitter if that kind of thing interests you if you enjoyed this video let me know if you did not enjoy this video let me know if i pissed you off by saying monster in the world isn't as good of a monster in the game as three ultimate or four ultimate go ahead and uh, let me know that i suck all the eggs but until next time Goodbye, everybody.